Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio. In this particular tutorial, I wanna start something just a little bit different. I'm gonna ask you for help to actually help me build this particular project. So what is it? I'm creating an arena. And in this arena, there's a central column and then this central column is going to shoot out fireballs. So you're gonna to have to move as the player around this arena to avoid the fireballs. And maybe it's how long you last. So what I wanna do is to start off with creating the arena, the column and the initial fireball kind of pattern but I'm gonna ask you to help me build patterns for this particular game. And then we'll do a few other things as well. So we're gonna build this together. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. Okay, so here I am in Unity and I want this to be a community project and have you help me. So what I'm gonna do is I want to create an arena. Inside the arena, there's going to be a central column that's going to be the enemy. And then with that, then I'm gonna create a pattern of fire that's going to come out and then you're gonna to have to dodge that. So what I'm gonna have you help me with is working on some of the Playmaker. And I need to go ahead and have something that you can start with. So let me go ahead and build an arena. I'm gonna use Pro Builder to do this and I've already created a couple materials for both the platform and the enemy column. I'm gonna go ahead and export those and then have those posted so that you can download. So let me go ahead and just get started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock this out real quick and then we'll get into the cool Playmaker stuff. Cool, so there we go. We now have an enemy column, and then I'm gonna have enemy fire starting and spawning out of the points on each of these sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a material to this, which I have already created, and it's just a simple kind of dark material. Because what I'm gonna do is I wanna create these fire balls that come out of those spots, and they're gonna kind of illuminate the scene. I do also want to go ahead and take the main camera, and I've set the main camera up to have a background of just a solid kind of dark color. And I need to also go ahead and set the camera up to be in the right position. So, okay, so the next thing we need to do is to actually create a fireball that's going to then move. So I wanna go ahead and just create a 3D sphere. And with this sphere, let's go ahead and make sure it's at a position of zero, zero, zero. So we'll just do a reset. And it's just a little on the big side. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So let's maybe do 0.3. And then I'm gonna move it up by one just for the moment, something like that. And I also already have a material that's just called fireball. So that is our sphere. And then with this, what I'm gonna do is to go ahead and I want to translate. I wanna move this through space. So I wanna go ahead and add a new Playmaker FSM. And let's just call this move fireball. Cool, and with that, what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and do a translate again. I wanna translate this in the Z axis. So I want it to move back in space, okay? So that's important. That's the direction that we wanna move this. And I'm gonna move this at a rate of five, okay? So self is fine per second and every frame is good. Now, the next thing we need to do is to also make sure we have a tag for this. So I already set up a tag for enemy fireball. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tag that with enemy fireball. So now that I have that done, that is actually going to move back in space. The other thing I wanna make sure is that my sphere collider is trigger. So then we'll be able to detect if we've hit our player with this trigger collider. Cool, so that is good to go. Now, the other thing that I wanna do is I want to have this game object be destroyed once it is 
in the air. So there's a couple ways we can do it. We can do it based off of distance or we can do it based off of time. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and have this be time related. We're gonna move this at a rate of five, but I want to wait for one second. Once, it's, once it reaches that one second, then I want to delete itself. We're gonna do a short wait and I'm gonna have this be after my translate. We're gonna wait for one second and then we're gonna add a new event. Actually, let's go ahead and then do a finished transition. Go off to a new state. And, and with this wait, we need to select finished. And then once it's finished waiting that one second, then we're gonna go to destroy self. Now we'll be adding some other things to this later on, but for now, this just gets us the base functionality. All right, so the other thing that we wanna do here in destroy self is to destroy self. So I'm gonna use the destroy self action and it's just gonna destroy the sphere. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to go and make sure we're back at our zero, zero position. And then I'm going to take and make this as a prefab. So I have a prefabs folder already. And all I need to do is just to take and drag this down into prefabs. You can see that this game object turns blue. That lets you know that it's a prefab. And then I can go ahead and just delete it. Cool. All right. So the other thing that I want to do with my columns here is I want to create some spawn points. So I'm going to spawn in these little indentations here. So what I'm gonna do is to, in my enemy game object, I'm gonna create four spawn points. And these are just gonna be empty game objects. So I'm gonna have that be spawn one. And the position, I want it to be in the Z axis and this first indentation on the back here, right about there. So the center point of that indention. So I'm gonna create, a, I'm gonna create another one, so spawn two. So on this second game object, I'm gonna go ahead and change the position to be a 0.25 on the X and then a zero on the Y or on the Z. So that's gonna make it in the center of this particular one. And then the other thing that I wanna do here is I want to rotate this. So we're gonna rotate this on the Y axis and I wanna rotate it in 90 degrees. Now I'm not actually seeing that here because it's an empty game object but just know that it is rotated. So the reason we're rotating it is because when we create a fireball, it inherits the parent's rotation. So we're rotating at nine degrees, and so instead of the fireball flying back this way, it's going to fly back this way. I'm gonna do that two more times and rotating 180 degrees and 270 degrees. Cool, so now we now have our spawn points, so we are good to go there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. Let's start working with our playmaker. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create an empty game object, and I'm gonna call this Game Manager. And I like to just go ahead and just add a bunch of dashes afterwards so that you know this is going to kind of act like a folder. So inside of this, I wanna create one more empty game object, and this is going to be our column fire. All right, so with that, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new Playmaker FSM. Now, this is going to control the patterns of the fire that's coming or the fireballs that are coming out of our column. For my part of this, I'm gonna have this column rotate 10 degrees, and then I want to go ahead and shoot off a fireball on each of the spawn points, and I'm gonna do that in order, and then I wanna loop through that a certain number of times. So in this first state, this is just what's going to control which pattern that we're setting up. I'm setting up the first one, you're gonna set up other one. Then I'm gonna bring that back into our game. Okay, so let's do this as pattern. Okay, so this is just gonna choose which pattern that we're gonna go to. Now I'm only gonna have one, but I'm gonna do a short wait. And the reason I'm doing a short wait is just because it gives the player a brief second to kind of orient themselves and see what's gonna happen then we're gonna go off into our first pattern, okay? So let's just do a finished transition here and finished. We're gonna go off to a new state and this is gonna be pattern one. This is the pattern that I'm creating, okay? So with this, what I wanna do is, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna rotate my column, all right? So let's just do a rotate, a simple rotate. The game object that I'm going to rotate is my enemy and I'm gonna rotate that by an angle of 10 degrees. Now. When you're doing yours, you can do whatever you want with it, um, hopefully in, in the Y axis, but rotate left, rotate right, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna rotate this in a positive 10 degrees. I'm not gonna have this every frame. I want this to just rotate once, and then we're gonna go off to a new state. So I'm gonna do a finished transition. And then in this first state, we're gonna go ahead and spawn a game object. We'll call this fireball space one. 
The reason I'm adding the space to it is because I'm gonna create the first one and then when I duplicate the state, so if I copy and paste it, it'll automatically go Fireball 2, Fireball 3, Fireball 4. So it's a nice way of managing those without having to retype everything. The first thing I wanna do is I want to create object. And with this, what object is it I wanna create? I wanna create my Fireball. And then the spawn point is going to be my spawn point one. Cool, so we're doing that. And then I'm gonna wait for a very short period of time. So I'm gonna do a short wait. And then I'm gonna have that be 0.1 seconds. And then we're just gonna do a finished transition and go off to a new state. So here, I'm just gonna duplicate this. So I'm gonna copy and then paste. So now I have four of those and I'm just gonna link these all together. So I'm just dragging off finished going to the next one. Now in each of these Fireball 2, so we just, we already create, we're creating the fireball. We just need to choose the spawn point. So here on the second one, it's going to be spawn point two. Now the cool thing is, and I want that to loop back on itself. Now I only want to do this for a certain number of iterations. So I'm going to go ahead and go off to a new state and I'm going to call this loop. And with that, I am going to do a loop action. So just type in loop. Here's the loop. We're going to add this action and we can choose how many number of times we want it to loop. So I'm going to have this loop 30 times and then I'm going to, I don't really need to store the current loop. Let's just go ahead and leave it at 30. And then the loop event, we want to just go ahead and have loop. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and add that transition and it's going to loop back again, back to pattern one, which then rotates and then creates four more fireballs. Okay. So once it's gone through this and it's done it 30 times, then we want to go back to our pattern choice. So I'm going to go ahead and do a finished transition, add that. So once it's done this loop 30 times, then it's going to go back to this pattern choice. So let's go ahead and give this a test to see if it works. So we're waiting two seconds. Boom, there we go. So now we're generating some fireballs based off of that little pattern. And it's gonna do it 30 times and then it's gonna stop and wait for another two seconds. So what I'm looking for you in this particular instance is to create some patterns that I can actually add to this and we can start building out this scene together. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial, something you can use for your game. Again, I'm asking for you to help me build this, and we'll do that through Discord. So please join my Discord so that we can connect. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.